Hi, welcome to another craft video from the Kansas City, Kansas Public Library. I'm Cheryl and I'm in charge of the craft kits at the main library. And today's video is to accompany a craft kit that we'll be giving out starting October 15th, 2023. But if you can't make it to the library in time or you're watching this later on our YouTube channel, don't worry. I'll tell you everything you need to get to make this project yourself with supplies from your local craft store. So what we are making today is because it is October and the weather is starting to turn cold, we are making these rice filled hand warmers. These are ones that you microwave for a few seconds to heat them up and then you'll warm your hands up for about 15 to 20 minutes at a time. Great, if, especially if you're trying to save energy costs and you have your your heater turned down a little bit low on the low side, so you should get a little chilly. Make these, heat them up in the microwave, and they'll keep your fingers warm. So what we've got in the kit, or what you'll need to purchase if you don't have a kit. Uh, first of all, you will have a baggie of rice. This is not minute rice. You want the long cook rice. The minute rice won't work well in the microwave. And how I measured this is I have these two little bowls and I measured them um, to be, I, I believe it's about a third to half a cup in each. And that should give you enough to make two hand warmers at about this level of fullness. You don't want to overfill them because that will, you know, push them and strain the seams and that won't fit well in your hands. So this should be about the right amount for two hand warmers. Then we're gonna have four pieces of cotton flannel fabric. Flannel just because it's fuzzy and it's soft. Uh, cotton because you do not wanna put polyester or synthetic fabrics in the microwave to heat these up because they can melt. So it has to be cotton. These are about four and a half by five inches. We have cut them with pinking shears in a zigzag to uh, try and eliminate some graveling on the edges. You will have a little baggie that contains two pieces of embroidery floss. Each one is about three foot or so, you're going to use one piece of embroidery floss around the stitch, around uh, each warmer. And then we have a needle. Now this is not a small sewing needle. This is a big needle because we need a big eye to be able to fit the embroidery floss through it. But you want to make sure the ones with the big eyes, some of them might have dull uh, tips. You don't want the dull tip, you want the sharp tip because it needs to go through the fabric. You will also need a pair of scissors to cut your thread and you might want to have uh, a measuring cup or a couple of little bowls so that you can split your rice evenly and you don't have to worry about um, getting one fuller than the other. You will also need a microwave because these are heated up in the microwave to get them warm. Now let's get started on the instructions. And we're just going to put them back to back and make sure you like the design on each side. Some people like it on one side or another. It's up to you. Now we're going to take one of the pieces of embroidery floss and you should have you should be able to do one hand warmer with each piece. So I am going to thread this through and on the other end I'm going to make a knot. Now I'm going to be making a fairly big fat knot so it won't pull through, but if you can't make a, a big enough knot, you can always make 
on one knot and then make a second knot right on top of the the other one so if you're not used to sewing when you sew you're going to have the tail the the end that does not have the knot is going to be shorter than the one that does have the knot and that's how you would sew so we're going to go in uh, we're going to come up through both of these and we're going to come in about oh a quarter of an inch from each edge you don't want to go right to the edge uh, otherwise you might um, pull you might pull out the sides that the fabric edges might come off so you want to stay about a quarter of an inch in and what I like to do is I like to take one little stitch in the same spot just to kind of tack it down so that that knot doesn't pull through and if you if you take a, a stitch in the same spot that kind of locks that end now we're just going to go in and out and in and out and you want to do these and fortunately some of these have straight lines where we can follow and you want to do this fairly close together you can do one stitch at a time if you'd like but don't try to do too many and I'm just going to go all the way around and do that and I personally am going to take another uh, back stitch right at each corner to reinforce the corners so I will be right back when I've got this side done okay I finished one side and I'm going to smooth it down and make sure that my stitches aren't pulling it up too tight and so now I'm going to um, I'm going to go down and take a stitch the other direction so that I was going this way now I'm going this way and as I said I'm going to take another stitch in the corner so I'm going to go down where I was going before and come right back up in the same spot to lock those corners in place now I am going to go ahead and do three sides do not do the fourth side that's the part we're going to pour the rice into so we're going to do three sides with the stitches reinforce that corner and then pause while we put the rice in Okay, I've just taken the reinforcing stitch at the uh, at the corner. Now, if you're not a, a normal sewer, if you don't do a lot of hand sewing, if you get to the point where um, this one is this end is no longer shorter, it's about the same size. You'll want to just um, kind of tug on your needle a little bit to give you a little bit extra room so that that side is always shorter that keeps you from doing two uh, double thickness of stitches okay so I have taken my uh, back stitch in the corner and I've left this side open and now we're going to take this rice and if you have a spoon you can use a spoon if you're really careful and have somebody to help you you might be able to pour it in a little bit but I don't risk it and you're going to put half in here now you are certainly welcome to measure this rice so that you can definitely get half exactly What I did was I measured the rice using these two little bowls so if you wanted you could get your measuring cup and measure or put them in two separate bowls so that you know when 
when you've done half. Okay, so that was half there. However you want to do it, or if you're good at eyeballing it, you can just do it that way. So the only thing you have to remember is do not fill this all the way full. You want to be able to close this side up and stitch it closed. You don't want it to be straining at the seams, um, otherwise it will start ripping your stitches out. And so this is about as much as I like to put in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to the other end of this. So you see, if you had this extremely full, um, you would be uh, worrying about keeping it closed and not letting the rice fall out. I also think having it a little bit under full helps it conform to your hands a little bit better when you finally heat it up. When you get to the corner, remember, flatten out that. I'm going to take, and I'm, I'm going to act like I'm doing one of those locking back stitches. I'm just going to go down and come right back up. But instead of pulling it all the way through, I'm going to form a knot. And I do that by doing, by, by taking this that's right next to the needle, and I'm going to hold it and do one, two, three, and then I hold that down with my thumb while I go ahead and pull the needle through. And that forms a little knot right there. If you're worried about whether or not your knot's going to come undone, you can do that a second time if you'd like. Now I'm going to get my scissors. I'm going to trim off. I'm not going to trim it right down at the knot because I don't want to risk cutting that knot and having it unravel. So I'm going to trim it like, oh, with a little bit of a tail. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit of that tail there. And so that's going to be my hand warmer. And you might have some ravelly pieces here and there. This is why we cut the fabric with this zigzag scissors. They're called pinking shears because we're not um, see we're not hemming these edges. And if you just left them, if you just cut them straight, those little fringy parts might just pull and start unraveling the whole side. Whereas the little pinking pointy cutting actually helps keep it from completely unraveling the fabric. Although it, it might, you might find little pieces here and there coming off, that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to go ahead and do the second one with the second piece of embroidery thread, embroidery floss, and when it's finished I'll come on back and we'll do the little wrap up. Okay, so there's our finished hand warmers. Now, to heat these up, you will put them in the microwave for 10 seconds. If they're not warm enough, you can put them in for another 10 seconds. Do not go over 30 seconds total. You will get them way too hot you might burn yourself. Okay. 10 seconds at a time until they're warm, no more than 30 maximum. You probably only need 20 seconds. That will get them all nice and hot and warm, and you can stick these in your pockets and put them around your hands. Um, and they will stay warm for about 20 minutes or so. 
So it's a good short-term thing to warm your hands up in the evening. Okay, so thank you for viewing another craft video from the Kansas City, Kansas Public Library. I'm Cheryl. I'll see you next time. Bye.